What's up everybody? Jesse, Slot City Fishing. We're back. Look at all this stuff. Rig tying. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And especially the float hook. You guys saw I uploaded the video. The next best uh, surf fishing hack was how to put floats on your hooks. Look at that, bro. He ate it. It works. Look, the, it's set just perfect in the corner of the mouth too. Yeah, dude, Slot City method. It's working. I'm gonna try to catch some more. That video got a lot of attention, especially on Facebook. People were sharing it around. The concept is the fish, uh, there's underwater footage being released now. There's a video by Tony from Fish Gum showing that the fish will actually chomp on your floats. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to make a, a couple different uh, versions of that. But I was thinking about it, making these rigs, and I recently had the opportunity to make a slot CD fishing rig. We were gonna sell it, I was gonna make a little bit of money, they were gonna make some, and I declined it. And the reason why is I tie my own rigs, and it made me research how much it could cost, like the most cheap way to do this. And I found something pretty astonishing. So I'm gonna share with you a way that I know how to tie rigs. I used to do it this way before I started tying with a rig board but I'm gonna show you how and why and how much it costs. And uh, I think that you're really, really gonna like it. All right, folks, this is your store bought Pompano rig. And this is a pretty low quality one. It's got all the wrong stuff on it, but they still sell it. And the reason why is uh, tackle distributors will sell this to companies for legitimately like cents, less, less than a dollar, way less than a dollar. And they're buying it in super crazy large quantities because the profit margin is high and they don't care what's on here, right? So I'm gonna show you what I use, and there's a lot of rig tires that do make some very high quality stuff, and I'm not saying that everybody should do this. There is a time and a place for buying rigs. If you're watching this video, stumbled upon it, and you're a guy that just goes fishing on vacation for two weeks out of the year, and you don't know how to tie rigs, just go buy some store-bought rigs, man. They're good, right? I would go to your tackle shop and ask which ones have been doing well. That way you're not just blindly going and buying something. But I'm gonna show you the tackle that's on, I would say 99.9% .9 of these rigs. I'm gonna show you how much it costs, where you can buy it, and how much it actually costs per rig. For the record, this is my opinion. You don't have to like it. I'm just trying to share with you things that I learned over you know 10 years of me fishing and talking to a bunch of really good guys that I trust in the fishing industry. So let's talk about tackle now. The hooks that I use are Eagle Claw Laser Sharp 2 aught Circle C hooks. Uh, they are number L197 2 aught. You can buy them at Walmart. If you buy a bunch of rigs, I mentioned if you were the guy that fishes two times uh, you know, a year on vacation, this isn't for you. But if you fish two, three times a week and you're going to burn through some tackle, the way to save money is to buy this stuff in large quantities. So I was thinking, where can I buy the highest quantity of these things the cheapest? And out of curiosity, I called Eagle Claw, the company itself. The number's on the website. If you call them, a guy will pick up the phone and there was no hold. He picked up pretty much right away. And I was like, L197, two watts. How much does it cost for a thousand? And I was thinking that it was going to be, you know, uh, between 150 to 200 bucks, right? I was wrong. A thousand L197 hooks cost $102.66. And then with shipping, you're at $112.66. All right. I know what you're thinking. I don't want to spend over a hundred dollars on fishing hooks and I don't need a thousand of them. That's a butt ton of fishing hooks. Yep. You're right. You don't, but I still want you to be able to get them at 10 cents a hook. So what you need to do is a group order, go on a fishing Facebook page. Say you want to make a group order, uh, just get you and a couple of your buddies. Cause I want to show you how much you'll save in costs. So, these are the different quantity packs. You got a five pack, 3.99, 80 cents a hook. 40 pack, 12.99, 33 cents a hook. 100 pack, 23.99, 24 cents a hook. A thousand is 102.66. That gets you down to 10 cents a hook. So if you go in with four of your friends and split that by five, now you're at $20.50 and you divide them up, you get 200 hooks, which would normally cost you Two 100 packs at $23.99 will cost you $47.98.
So you cut your cost by over half doing this and that's how you get your rigs down so cheap. Um, if you're seeing this and you have the great idea that you wanna buy these and resell them because you can get them so cheap or tie your own rigs and start selling your own rigs, you can do that, but you better be licensed to do it. Uh, you gotta pay uh, Florida revenue tax and then you also have to pay excise tax. If you don't do that, the government will come after you and take your house. Uh, don't do it without a license, that's illegal. Now, let's talk about line. The cheapest, most accessible tackle that you can buy is at Walmart. And the reason why is they buy their stuff in such large quantities that they're able to sell below MSRP, right? So those Eagle Claw hooks are available at Walmart and Eagle Claw told me that if you can find them in the 1000 quantity at Walmart, it will be cheaper than they actually sell on their website. But they were all out, I couldn't find it. So that 10266 was the best price that I found. Now line, pretty much everyone that I know will suggest monofilament line, right? This is Berkeley Big Game Trilene. And the reason that people use this is you can go to any Walmart and buy it. It's cheap. This spool of line for 650 yards costs $7.64. Mono is good because it has stretch in it. This 20 pound line, you can cast a four ounce sinker and it's pretty hard to break and it's cheap. So now we know that we can buy a thousand hooks a thousand of L197 hooks is 102.66 and 112 with shipping. That comes out to 10 cents per hook. Now we bought a thousand hooks. We can make uh, dropper loops with two hooks on it. We can make 500 rigs. So let's see how much it costs to make 500 rigs, what it would be price per each rig, right? So I did the math. A uh, a length of line for one dropper is about three yards, right? So how many spools do you need? I did the math. It comes out to about two and one third spool of this 650, right? That comes out to be $17.62, right? So now let's add this up, that 112, and that's the hooks shipping and the line. You're at $130.28. Divide that by 500, and now your rigs cost 26 cents per rig, the way that I'm gonna show you how to tie it because you don't need swivels and you don't need coast locks. I'm gonna show you. And then I put all my rigs in these plastic bags, similar to this one. It's these right here. You can buy these at Walmart. The whole bag uh, costs $2.74. So if you divide that out for 500 bags, it's 13 bucks. So you can have a rig in a bag without any coast locks and swivel for 29 cents per rig. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how to tie this rig now using just line and hooks and you'll be ready. I'm gonna show you how to tie a surgeon's knot. Uh, another name for this is an overhand knot. All that you do is get your line, lay out a loop, and then you're gonna go under and over the top of it and then you're going to do that through the loop and that's it that's just called an overhand knot and then so this knot won't slip you're going to do it one more time and then cinch that up behind the first knot like that with two of them this first knot can slip but then it's gonna hit the bottom one and it won't slip. But that's called a surgeon's knot. So let's tie it now with the fishing line. All right, go out as far as you want for your first drop. We'll say about like that. I would say between 13 and 16 inches is a good value for that. You're gonna go over the top and through. Then you're gonna do it again over the top and through and then you want to cinch that knot behind the first one just like that and then we're going to do it again again I would say about 13 to 16 inches however you want between those two loops and then same thing and then once you get good at this you can do it really fast I actually tie this on the beach quite a bit
it's important to make sure that that knot, the second one, is behind it. It doesn't have to be close to it because that knot can slip and you can see right there, now it's tight against it. Then pay out your line down to where your weight's gonna go. And then do that same loop. And then just to make sure that the knot is strong, we're gonna do it one more time. There you go. And now you have the loop on the bottom. You're just gonna loop on all your stuff. So grab that loop, put it through, and that's where your weight is gonna go. Same thing with your hooks. You can loop, loop your hooks on, you can put your floats on, whatever you want to do, beads, but this part's important. You want the shank of the hook and the barb on the same side that you put the line through. So now that's hooked on. You got your loop, put the hook through it, and pull. And there you go. There's your double drop rig. To connect the line to the rig, you're gonna use your favorite line to line knot, which could be a uni to uni knot, or an FG knot, whatever you wanna tie. We'll do a uni to uni. To do that, you're gonna lay the two pieces of line together. You're gonna go over this one with a little loop, and then you're gonna go through it. With this line, this is actually like pretty heavy uh, fishing line compared to like five pound test line. So you really only need to do this like four times. and then you're gonna pull that tight. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Put it over it and then up through it. Now you have two uni knots. You're just gonna pull them tight together. Then cut your tags. And there you go. Cool, and that's with your line attached to your main line. Now you might be asking, what if it's a day with a lot of strong current and you need to use a Sputnik? Well, with this loop knot, do it the opposite of what you did to put it on. So slip this weight off. And then slip on a coast lock. And now you can clip on your sinker. Sweet. So you can see that you don't have to put a coast lock on every rig. If you want to, you can. If you want to use a swivel right here instead of a line to line, you can. 
A benefit of doing it like this is a fish with, uh, with sharp teeth, like a Spanish mackerel is a perfect example. If you have a shiny swivel on there, they will hit that swivel and break your line. And then you could make the argument that this is the most uh, natural and uh, less easy to see rig. There you have it. And you don't have to use Sputniks every time. If it's like a two to three foot surf day, a four ounce pyramid weight is cheaper. This is a storm sinker. You could use those too. So you use what you want to use. You use what braid, what line you like. I'm just showing you this because it's the cheapest way that I found. And in the bag, these come out to be 29 cents each. So now let's talk about floats and beads and uh, the float hook is what you guys have been waiting for. All right, now for the fun part, let's bedazzle our pompano rig. We've all been tricked. Somehow the fishing industry has told us that we have to play with beads and floats the same exact way that a young girl would play with this bead kit. Anybody who is telling you that you need this color combination or whatever, they're trying to sell you something nine times out of 10, unless it's a good buddy that you know, uh, because they're gonna say something like, my rigs worked the best, this one, you know, this color was hitting today and this one wasn't. If you had this one, you probably would have caught more fish. You figure out what works for you. Find some people that you trust. Uh, if it's an influencer and they mention an affiliate link, 100% they're trying to sell you something. And now I want you to think about it. I just showed you how to tie that rig for 29 cents and that rig is six bucks. The person who was the influencer is making a couple bucks and then the person who tied the rig is making a couple bucks. So you do it yourself. A bag of these floats, they cost between three to four bucks. You can find the beads like anywhere. Walmart had these. This is just a joke, but it's true. You can buy the beads at Walmart. For floats, I found DS Custom Tackle and the Sinker Guy are the two best places. And that's not me trying to advertise for them. That legitimately is the best place that I've found to find the correct size floats uh, and all the different color variations and stuff like that. That way you can make their your own. Uh, they do sell floats on Amazon, but they're not specific ones like this. So, um, yeah, figure out what floats you want to use. The Panhandle Fishing Report is a very good Facebook page, and they go live on Friday nights. They'll tell you what float combination, right around what beach, it might not be specifically, what time, like all kind of cool stuff. And that's inshore, offshore, uh, and surf fishing. So check that out before you buy a whole ton of this stuff. All right, now what you probably came here for, talking about float hooks, all right? This is how I did it at first. It's that same uh, L197 Eagle Claw Laser Sharp 2 out Circle C hook, these guys. And what I did is I got a hacksaw blade and I just cut the float right down the middle and then get to where you're actually at that inside part and then you push the float down onto it and it'll click in all right that's how i caught those redfish the other day and proved that this works really well now a guy on facebook forgive me i forgot your name i'll try to clip in a picture of it he was like if you drill the float you can just push the hook through it and yes you can do that this is a 7 64th size drill bit and that made it to where I could just slide the hook through the float. Then I was thinking about different variations of how to do that. This is a bullet float where I use that same drill bit and I just drilled like halfway up through it. And then I looped on my hook and pushed the hook down on top of it. That was pretty sweet. This is a float and bead that I forgot to mention. This is made by Green Gittums. Uh, I really dig this float. I haven't fished with it a whole lot yet, but I can tell you since I've been down in the panhandle, green is really good, and I also really like white. And like I said, that's a green get em. These are from DS Custom Tackle. The bullet floats cost a little bit more money, $8.99 for a 24-pack, and then $3.99 for a 24-pack. And I'm not sure what the sinker guys are, uh, but they're definitely competitive. They might be a little more, a little, little less, I'm not sure but you figure out which ones you want to make. Now I'll show you this crazy contraption. This is the skirt for a fluke rig. DS Custom Tackle has it. And then I put a float 
onto the hook by drilling it and sliding it on. And that just looks like a pompano jig. So really cool stuff, man. You play around and figure out what you want to make. But I showed you now that you can build a naked rig for 26 cents per rig, 29 to put it in the bag, instead of paying $5.99. And now you can just go nuts, bedazzle your rigs however you want. Use float hooks. Uh, this is where this concept initially came from. Shout out to a guy named 311 Pope. I don't know who you are, but uh, there's some talk on the internet if you search. This is where it came from. And apparently he was a commercial fisherman and this is what he used. So thanks for the inspiration for uh, me making the float hook on this uh, eagle claw hook. All right, guys. I showed you all the pompano rig bedazzling equipment that you would ever want or need or don't need, but you buy it anyway because it's fun. Uh, that's a big part of it, man, is just messing around and having fun doing it. Um, I do want to say that if you tie a lot of rigs, I got another video on how to use a uh, rig tying board. Uh, this will help you tie a lot more rigs faster and more consistently. That's what your rig tires are using and then your serious surf fishermen. A lot of people do do it. They do it by hand, but I would recommend a rig board. Uh, this video, I showed you how to make 500 pompano rigs for $130 and 28 cents, 26 cents per rig, right? If you throw other terminal tackle on there, like a swivel and a coast lock, it's still going to be 50 cents or less for your rig. Um, I did have a company offer to make a slot city fishing rig, but I turned it down for two reasons. I hate advertisements on YouTube videos. As soon as I see one, I turn it off. Uh, and then also I just felt like I tie my own rigs and I know that they cost like if you do it this way 26 cents and I felt like that was dishonest if you only fish you know a few times a month uh, or even a few times a year and you don't you're not interested in this just go buy some store-bought pompano rigs this video wasn't a jab at any rig maker I love what you guys do I feel like it serves a very specific purpose but if you're a serious fisherman if you're watching this video you probably are tie your own rigs because you're going to save a whole bunch of money and it's one of the most rewarding things that you can do is to catch a fish on a rig that you tied um, i want to say i know as a social media influencer when i recommend products people buy them i haven't made a single cent off of any of this stuff these companies do send me stuff to make videos with and i appreciate it but i'm not making any money from any of these companies this is genuinely what i use and uh, how i do it so I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. That helps the YouTube algorithm get the video, make more views. And um, yeah, we'll catch you next time.